Hello. So today we're going to talk about uh, object-oriented programming, and specifically like classes. The chapter goals. So what is object-oriented programming? So up until now, the style of programming that we have seen or we have uh, done is called structured programming. Why? Because we like any kind of code that you write needs to have some kind of structure, right? In other words, you divide your uh, bigger task into something called subtasks, right? So if you remember, we have uh, started writing functions, right? In which, yes, you can do everything in your main, like in your main file, but we have not done so, right? We have specifically asked or being asked to write functions. Why is that? So you can divide your long list of, or big thousands of lines of code of program into smaller chunks or functions, okay? Now in larger companies, let's say Microsoft or, or other like big uh, software companies, you cannot write all code in one place. It's simply unfeasible. Why? Because you have thousands of coders writing code. All of them cannot be working on the same one file, right? So what they do is, or what you do in any kind of big uh, software program is that you break down it into chunks and say, okay, you are responsible for this part, go write code for this. You are responsible for this part, go write code for this, and so on, right? So meaning that everybody is writing their own uh, chunks or subtasks. Until now, what we have done is that we have written those in functions. Okay, now uh, we're going to talk about object-oriented programming. Why? Because structured programming, even if you uh, uh, subdivide into functions, does not go that far. Okay, you need to have some kind of structure on top of a function. And that structure is called a class, okay? And how it happens is, or like where the name object-oriented programming comes from, is that that structure or that class has uh, data properties and functions in, in that, let's say. So in one class, you have something called like uh, the data of that class and the functions of that class. What we do is, or what one does, is that you create an object of that class and then you start using that object. Meaning that anybody who knows that a class of this, this, this property exists, they can just create an object of that class and start using that class or its functions without knowing the details what's happening inside the class, right? Similar to objects, uh, sorry, similar to functions, if you know that a function accepts this input and gives this output, we don't concern ourselves with what's happening inside the function, right? For example, until now we have used the print function. So what we say is that print this and it takes such us to the screen because that's our objective, right? So the output goes to the screen. We are not concerned how the print function is written or we don't care like what's happening inside that function, right? Similarly, these objects have their own set of data with a set of methods that act upon that data and we can just use those objects, okay? So it's more uh, like used to build complex programs and you will see like where the advantages come from once we start learning more so we have, have we already seen objects yes we have for instance we have used uh, or some of you might have used uh, uh, the two upper function right when you're talking about uh, you were dealing with strings right Something like this, that you give a string and say, okay, convert it to uppercase, 
let's say, or convert it into lowercase or something like that. So in this example, what's happening is that you give a string and then you press a dot and then you can call a function, right? Similar examples are when you have a list, you say dot insert, right? Or uh, dot remove from the list or dot pop and so on, right? So when you press a dot, that convention is usually where object-oriented programming comes from, usually. Uh, all the big programming, object-oriented programming languages, C++, Java, C Sharp, they all use this dot notation, okay? And also like Python has the same. So what happens is that you're saying that this is my object and on this object dot means that this, the thing before the dot is an object and you press a dot or you enter a dot and then you say call this function. So functions are called methods in object-oriented programming. They behave and work the same way. You can give inputs, arguments, without arguments, and so on. So a method is essentially a function. So what we are saying is that call this upper function on this object. What is the object? Object is a string. Why do we call this an object here? Until now, we have just said that anything that's inside the quotes is a string. But now I'm writing string object, right? Why? Because any string that we write comes from the string class, okay? Um, so when we just uh, uh, define a uh, string in quotes, it's actually creating an object of the string class. Uh, I can give another example of objects. So what objects do of a certain class, so you can create different objects of one class, okay? The property is like we said earlier in the earlier slide that each class had its, has its data and methods associated with that class. For example, this class of uh, like Python, let's say 101, our class has many students in it, right? So what are the properties of those students? Each student has a height, a weight, uh, hair color, hair length, uh, and so on, like different properties associated with each student in this class, right? Now each student shares the same properties, right? So you have number of eyes, uh, some may have one, some may have two, uh, and so on. Yes, you have the same. I mean, the property is the same, but values can be different. For example, somebody has black hair, somebody else has blonde hair, for instance, right? Hair color is the property. These values of black and blonde are uh, the values of that data of uh, property, for instance, right? So yes, all of these objects or all of these students in the class will share the same properties, but may have different values. Okay, what can each student do then? So each student can read, write, uh, eat, jump, this, that. So all those are methods that a student can work on, right? So one student can be jumping, the other could be eating. But all of them, like I said earlier, have the same properties, have, can perform the same functions. So that is object-oriented programming in a nutshell that uh, members of a class have the same type of data, may have different values, and the same type of methods that they can work on, but obviously they don't, don't need to work on the same methods all the time. So, some, uh, so, so that's object-oriented programming in a nutshell that 
you bring all these methods and the data together in a class and then when you create an object of that class for instance student a now creating that student a will be different from another or can be different from another student called student b because student a may have this 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 property set student b, b may have this 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 and some other property set that's it or or have different values and then you can use the these student a object and student b object to perform the same functions or different functions right but essentially the purpose of a class is to bring all the data and methods together in um, one place okay then the next thing is like i said earlier you can only call the methods that are defined for that class for example in our student class example students can eat read write etc students cannot grade for instance so the grading function will be available on only for the faculty class right if you try to use the grade function for the student object you cannot right because it's not defined similarly for other classes or method uh, classes you can only call methods that are defined for that specific class on a given object example so we've already seen that upper works for the string class what if we convert this string into a list right so now the list has two uh, members the first is a string the other uh, index uh, the second index is also another string right and what we are saying is that on these objects convert them into dot upper if you try to write something in in the compiler or in genie it will be considered illegal why because list does not have an upper function defined for it or in other words the list class has not defined an upper function however on a list class you can use a pop you can use a remove you can use uh, add and so on because those methods are defined for the list class okay so the point being that uh, a class has has its own data or data properties and methods and you can only use those that are defined for a given class okay the next thing public interfaces so what is an interface interface is like all these uh, functionality that you are uh, that you can use uh, brought together inside a class and and told to the members outside the, of the class that you can only use this 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 method okay so the point being when it's defined for a class you do not know how the object stores its data coming back to our print statement do we know how the compiler takes that print statement and throws it out to the screen no we do not right we only know that we can call the print function okay so what does that mean that means that we have a public interface defined for us in which we know that you write the name of the function and you supply this this information and uh, this will happen right so that uh, description of what the name of the function is and what you need to supply becomes or is called the interface meaning that you have a way to communicate with that class using this interface okay so all we need to know is the public interface meaning which methods we can use and what these methods do and that's it we do not need to be concerned about how you store data or how the data is stored in a class because the method will take care of it or should take care of it okay now this defining it into an interface or the process of providing interface and hiding those implementation details the process is called encapsulation 
all the big programming languages, C Sharp, Java, C++, Python, provide abilities for encapsulation. Or these are encapsulated languages because they are at root object-oriented languages. Okay, so with the implementation details hid hidden, if there is a need to update your program, you can keep the name of the function the same. Obviously, the inputs are the same. Inside, you can change the whole functionality of the function, like how it's currently performing. You completely change that, uh, but from the outside, the callers of the function will not know of anything, and they will keep interacting with the uh, function the same in the same manner. Okay, where it comes in handy is, uh, for instance, your uh, software updates, right? Because different uh, portions of the program know that okay, I or I am calling this function with this input. And that's it. Now the function has, let's say, been updated. Three hundred more lines of code are now added to that function. But does the caller or is the caller affected? No, it's not. And then the second question is, should the caller be affected? No, they should not because that is the beauty of object-oriented programming that you can keep your interface same, change the details or implementation details, and your program will work as intended. Okay, it does not break. 